Page 10, the autocovariance function. The autocovariance function is actually a specific definition of the covariance function. You see, one random variable and another random variable have a covariance. Covariance measures the degree to which the two random variables move together. And covariance is defined by equation 2.2.1 on page 10. Gamma, which means covariance, is equal to expectation zt minus mu times zt plus k minus mu. Since we are here dealing with a covariant stationary process, the mean is constant. So the expectation of zt is mu, and the expectation of zt plus k is also mu. And we call this autocovariance instead of covariance in time series. Why do we call it autocovariance? It's because here you're not calculating covariance between x and y. You're calculating covariance between zt and zt plus k. This is actually coming from the same process, but at a different time. And so to emphasize that, we say that it's autocovariance. Covariance. And the exact same goes for correlation. We're not interested in correlation between x and y. We're interested in autocorrelation between zt and zt plus k. So we're looking at the same process at a different time and seeing the correlation, which is called the autocorrelation. The autocovariance function gamma k and the autocorrelation function rho k have the four properties listed at the bottom of page 10. The first important property is that the autocovariance at lag 0 is actually equal to the variance. So gamma 0 is just equal to variance of zt. And you can see that if you look at equation 2.2.1 on page 10, which states gamma k is equal to the covariance between zt and zt plus k. If gamma k is 0, because the lag is 0, then the equation becomes gamma 0 equals the covariance between zt and zt plus 0. zt plus 0 is just zt, so the covariance between zt and zt is just the variance of zt. And rho 0 will always be equal to 1. You can see that by looking at equation 2.2.2 on page 10. Rho k equals gamma k divided by gamma 0. Well, gamma k is just gamma 0 because k is 0. So gamma 0 divided by gamma 0 is always going to be equal to 1. So rho 0 is always equal to 1. So the autocorrelation at lag 0, rho 0, is equal to 1 all the time by definition. Rho 0 is just variance of zt divided by variance of zt. Variance divided by variance. And you can also show that the autocovariance and autocorrelation satisfy the second property on page 10. Gamma k's are always smaller or equal in magnitude to gamma 0, and rho k's are always smaller or equal in magnitude to 1. All the autocovariances at different values of k, gamma k, k equal to this, k equal to that, all those gamma k's are going to be less than or equal to gamma 0. Gamma 0 you can think of kind of as like a variance. Again, so you can think of this rule as being the covariance, absolute value of the covariance, is always going to be less than or equal to the variance. And the absolute value of rho k, absolute value of the correlation, is always going to be less than or equal to 1. Note that I said you can think of gamma 0 as being a variance, but it's actually a product of the standard deviations of zt and zt plus k. If zt and zt plus k were actually the same thing, if k was 0, then you'd have the standard deviation of zt multiplied by the standard deviation of zt plus k, where k is 0, it's the standard deviation of zt again. So standard deviation of zt times standard deviation of zt is just variance of zt, right? So that's the case in which you have gamma k being variance when k is 0. So gamma 0 is equal to variance gamma zero being variance. And all the autocovariances must be less than or equal to the variance. The autocovariance cannot be greater than the variance, just like the co covariance cannot be greater than the variance. And this is actually a consequence of dividing both sides by gamma zero. Now, a third interesting property is that the autocovariance function, gamma k, and the autocorrelation function, rho k, are actually even functions, and so they're symmetric about the lag k equals zero. In other words, gamma k is equal to gamma minus k, and rho k is equal to rho minus k. Gamma k and gamma minus k are the same, and rho k and rho minus k are the same for all values of k. Gamma k and rho k are symmetric about the lag k equals zero, as you can see on the correlogram 
in figure 2.1, page 11. We're going to be looking at a lot of corellograms in this class, so get used to these because they're very important when we're identifying models. You can see in the corellogram figure 2.1 that we only plot the non-negative values of k. We don't worry about the negative values of k because they're symmetric. So anything left of the y-axis is not plotted. Now, a fourth important property is the autocovariance function gamma k and the autocorrelation function rho k are both positive semi-definite. What that means is, all different times, ti minus tj, you multiply any coefficient, alpha i, alpha j, and the sum of those must be no less than zero. That's what we call positive semi-definite. If, by the way, something was strictly greater than zero, we would call it positive definite. But here it's no less than zero, so we call it positive semi-definite. So your autocorrelation and covariance function are both positive semi-definite. A student asked whether this property held just for strictly stationary processes, like the, the Gaussian process, but actually it holds for any distribution, not just strictly stationary processes like the Gaussian process, any distribution. Now let's look again at page 11, figure 2.1, the correlogram. One way with which we try to understand the autocorrelation function is by graphing it. And when we graph it, notice the pattern on figure 2.1. You remember that the absolute value of rho k is less than or equal to 1 from property 2. Because it's a correlation, the correlation can only be between negative 1 and positive 1, right? So rho k will be no less than negative 1 and no more than positive 1. Furthermore, since it's an even function, symmetric about lag 0, we only plot in terms of positive k. We don't have to plot in terms of negative k. What's the shape of this autocorrelation function? Since it's an even function, it's a mirror image. And we only plot the positive. And of course, the shape of an autocorrelation function is not necessarily this shape. This is just one of the possible shapes.